Hello, welcome to the Crates Motel. My name's Conan. In today's video, we're going to look at templates for the MPC, specifically my updated template for the new MPC 3.0. Let's jump in. Okay, so I've had quite a few requests for this just to show my updated template in the new 3.0. I want to just explain something quickly though. I had a few comments when I first did a review last week, I think it was, uh, on the new 3.0. I mentioned that when you press new project in MPC, it loads up a trap kit, etc. And so I said, it's better if you make your own template if you don't want to have that trap kit as your new project. And quite a few people jumped in and said, no, 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 you don't need to do that. You can do this to load up a blank project. And perhaps I didn't, I guess what it was, I didn't really explain myself too well. It wasn't that I wanted a blank project and that I didn't want the trap kit. The point of a template is that it loads up a template with your settings. So you don't really actually want a blank project. You want some of your settings already baked into your, temp your project when you open it up. So that's why I set up my own user template. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through some of the settings that I've made in my own user template, and then I'll show you how to save it. It's really, really easy. And then also I'll share my template. You can see uh, below if you check the link and you can download that and you can use that. And I just want to point out you can use that in 3.0 and you can also use it in the old 2.15. So here we go. When you first turn your NPC on, as you know, you're faced with this page. So you can go for the new project, which will load up a trap kit, or you can go for any of these uh, project templates, which Akai have already made for you. But I use a user template. So if you hit user template down here on the bottom left, it will load up your project. Now, user templates are totally your own thing. You know, I mean, you, you by all means, you can download this template, tweak it, and then resave it to how you actually want it. So this is how, this is my template. If I want to start a project, more often than not, these are the settings which I'm going to be, I'm going to have, and I can just tweak certain things. So to start with, we've got the main page. It's decided to be orange today. It seems to be random, but today it's orange. So a lot of the projects that I start, because I do tend to make house music at the moment, I have 120 as my BPM. So you can set that in your user template. I have one bar, but it's really, really easy to change it, just as it is really, really easy to change that. But I have it set to 120 in my template and one bar. I have one track, drum group, and one audio. And that's because that's the way that I work. Another setup that you can have if you find that you use a synth a lot, you can have a synth set up in your template so it's automatically there, like the, the Mini Moog uh, or OP4 or whatever, whatever you particularly use. Uh, also, if you use a lot of audio tracks, you can obviously have more set up. But the point of this is it's so easy to duplicate tracks now that I have one drum group track set up and one audio set up. So that if I do just want more, I literally just have to press the duplicate track here and it's just really, really easy. So that's how I have it set up to start with. And if you jump to track mix, obviously you can see I've got just one track and I've got one audio. Another thing that I have set is I have all of my channels set to minus six dB. Now that just helps with gain staging. Now I keep promising to make a video about gain staging uh, and I'm gonna include that. I'm gonna do a breakdown of mixing in the MPC in the new 3.0 and I'll go through gain staging, etc. in that. I mean, I probably could do a dedicated video of gain staging actually. But I have it set up to so minus six. So again, like I said, if I want to duplicate a track, any track that I duplicate, let's duplicate another one. If I go into track mix again, as you can see, they're all set up to minus six dB. So that just helps get you started with your gain staging. So let's just get rid of those. So I think now we're back to one track, one audio. There you go. So the other things that I have set up as well is I have my return set up and I have my main output set up. So if we just go to those now, skip through submixes. You can have, if you always use submix for your drums, you always use submix for your bass, et cetera, et cetera, you can have effects set up in your template so they're already there. And I'll show you what I mean now when I get to returns. Now with return one for many, many years, return one for me has always been my reverb. So on return one, you can see that I have air reverb set up and air power EQ set up. So they're there straight away. That makes it really, really easy for me 
if I want to send any, uh, if I want any reverb on any of my kits or vocals or anything at all, I just know that by habit it's on return one and it's already set up. I don't have to slow down my work for anything like that. Return two, I've always had delay. So again, I've got delay and I've got power EQ. Return three, I have air compressor. Reason for that is if I want to do any parallel compression, I've got that set up so I can have a send a little bit to return three and I've got return, I've got a parallel compressor already set up. Air compressor, but you can choose whatever compressor you want. It doesn't have to be air compressor. I use air compressor because it's quite clean, but if you want to add a bit of character to it, you want to imprint, bake in a little bit of a sound, you can have vintage or the opto or whatever, whichever compressor you want, you can choose. Number four, I tend to use tend to leave blank, and that can be anything. I might want to use a, another parallel effects, like maybe air lo-fi or something like that. So then, if I continue and go to my outputs, you can see in my outputs I have the air compressor set up, I have air power EQ set up, I have air tube drive set up, and I have air limiter because that's going to be my main out. Now I have actually made a video explaining why I do that but just quickly for many years uh, I was lucky enough to be working on an SSL board so I tend tended to always have uh, the G bus compressor everything going through that so that's that was on my master bus EQ is really handy just to have a general broad stroke EQ you're not gonna be doing anything surgical here Tube drive gives me a little bit of character if I want to kind of just add a little bit of saturation or a little bit of drive. It's really, really nice for that if you use it subtly. And then, of course, I've got a limiter. I don't tend to do much with the limiter on my main out, but it's there just to catch any peaks if I just happen to miss something. Because, you know, sometimes I might make a six minute track and I can't be bothered to sit through it and listen to it all the way through. So it's just there to catch any peaks. But generally, if I see my limiter doing any work when I'm uh, making a track, it's a good indication actually. Flick to your limiter on your main out. If you see your limiter's doing any reduction, then basically you want to make some changes in your, your gain staging throughout your mix. So that's a really good indication for that. So that's that's what I've got set up on my outputs. And that's that's pretty much my template. You know, I've got return, I've got my main out set up, I've got my return set up. And then all the way down to the bottom, I've got one track set up and one audio set up. And as I explained, it's really, really easy to duplicate. So the next part, if we go to main, yep, we're on main already. Okay, so now if I want to save that template, if you go into project as, straight away you'll see down at the bottom, you can hit save as template. So when you save as template, it will basically save that in such a way that it's a template file. You can save it wherever you want to save it, but as a rule, it's probably a good idea to save it in your normal projects folder. That's where I've saved it anyway. There's no wrong or right, obviously. And then basically, once you've saved that, if you then go into preferences, still finding my way around 3.0, go into preferences. And if you go into project defaults, it's not agit project defaults, is it? it's project load. There you go. Go into project load, save you'll see here template file and here basically you can choose your template file so this is my projects folder and you can see here I basically just need to choose that once I've selected that it will come up in there and then when I turn my MPC on and press user template it will automatically load that project as my user template so there you have it really straightforward really really easy and a massive time saver for me anyway and you know, spend a little bit of time building your template, get it exactly, you know, obviously when you start tracks, they can always be different, but there are certain things which would probably apply to most of the music. You know, once you know your workflow, most of the music that you make, you're going to have certain things that you, uh, you know, you, you might always use a reverb, you might always use a delay like I have on my returns. Good idea to have it set up to minus 6 dB just to help with your gain staging. Doesn't have to be minus 6 dB. That's just a habit that I've had for years. It can be whatever dB you want it to be. But minus 6 dB as a rule is a pretty good one to aim for. So, you know, spend that time building your template. And then when you start work, you don't have to worry about it. I mean, one of the things I absolutely love, especially about the returns thing, is if I'm in the flow and I've got my return set up, you know, return one's got my reverb on it, return two's got my delay, return three, my... Uh, parallel compression whilst I'm working I don't have to stop and think all oh, right now I need to choose a reverb etc you know it just it, those kind of things can slow your workflow down and one of the things I love about the MPC is it makes my workflow very instant you know I, I, I 
kind of think as I'm doing things and I just want to jump in and I don't want to be held up by setting up constant effects chains, etc. So and that's why in my template I have my reverb, my delay set up. It just just makes things so much easier and so much quicker. So thanks for watching. This is a Quakes Motel. My name is Conan. Until next time. <laughs>